Postman Pat and the Christmas Post by John Cunliffe. It was nearly Christmas and there was deep snow in Greendale. Each day, Pat had more and more Christmas parcels and letters to deliver. Jess had to curl up small to make room for them. I've never known such a busy Christmas, said Pat. Everyone in Greendale was busy getting ready for Christmas. Granny Dryden was busy knitting warm woolly jumpers for all her friends and relations. Ted Glenn was busy making wooden trucks and trains. Alf Thompson was busy making walking sticks from Sheep's Horn. Miss Hubbard was busy making beetroot wine and table mats and calendars. Mrs. Pottage was busy making pokerwork pictures. The Reverend Timms was busy making framed pictures of Greendale Church. Katie and Tom were busy making all kinds of pictures and presents and decorations at home and at school. Everyone was busy writing Christmas cards. And when all these cards and presents had been addressed and wrapped up and tied up and stuck together with sticky tape, they had to go in the post. When Pat emptied the letter boxes, they were full to bursting. Every day the post office was full of people buying stamps and cards and string and sticky tape and wrapping paper and envelopes. "'weighing their parcels and asking for more stamps and airmail labels, "'asking how much it would be to send a parcel to France or America or Africa. "'Poor Mrs Goggins was run off her feet. "'I'm glad Christmas is only once a year,' she said. "'Then one cold and frosty morning Pat had a surprise "'when he walked into the post office. "'Mrs Goggins was smiling.' I have a helper now, she said. Who can it be? said Pat. He could hear someone in the back room busy sorting the parcels and singing to himself. I'm sure I know that voice, said Pat, but I just can't place it. You'll never guess, said Mrs Goggins. Have a look and see. Well, I never, said Pat. It was Ted Glenn. He was wearing a special post office badge to show that he was a proper post office Christmas post worker. Hello, Pat, said Ted. How am I doing? You look to be doing a good job as far as I can see, said Pat. I'll give you a hand with the village post, said Ted. "'so you can get on with the farms. "'You'd better get round to them before this snow gets too deep.' "'Thanks, Ted,' said Pat. "'I'll be glad of some help.' "'Ted set out with a big bag of letters and parcels "'for the houses of the village. "'One thing,' he said, "'it gets lighter as you go along. "'Cheerio!' "'Ted was on his way, "'and Pat soon followed with a van full of Christmas post.' There was a wonderful welcome at each house and farm that Pat called at. They had hot drinks and mince pies ready for him, and presents wrapped in shiny paper with labels saying, Not to be opened until the 25th of December. There were saucers of cream and toy mice for Jess. We'll be too full to eat our dinner, said Pat. The snow went on falling day after day. Pat was going up the hill to Thompson Ground when his front wheel slipped on the ice and the whole van skated across the road and into a deep ditch. Now Pat was well and truly stuck. "'What are we going to do now, Jess?' he said. "'If we don't get round with these parcels, half the people of Greendale won't get their Christmas presents in time. "'It's going to be cold waiting for help, too.' We'll just have to lock up and walk up the hill to see if Alf can bring his tractor down to pull us out. Just as Pat was setting out on the long walk, there was the sound of another engine coming up the hill. It was Sam in his mobile shop. He stopped when he saw Pat's van. It wasn't Sam's usual day for visiting Greendale, so Pat was surprised to see him. 
Hello, said Pat. What are you doing up this way today? It's a special trip, said Sam. Look in my van and you'll see why. Good gracious, said Pat. Sam's van had none of its usual groceries in it. He had taken the shelves out and there was a pile of parcels instead. I have a post office badge like Ted's, said Sam. I've hired my van to the post office to help with the Christmas post, and it looks as though you are stuck with a load of parcels still to deliver. Yes, said Pat, and it's getting late. It'll be dark soon, and this snow's getting bad. I'll take a share of your parcels, said Sam. You stay here, and I'll go back and ask Peter Fogg to bring the big tractor to pull you out. He'll be here in a jiffy. Thanks, said Pat. What a good thing you came along. They shared the parcels out, and Sam went back down the hill. Pat and Jess didn't have long to wait. They were very glad to hear the roar of Peter's engine coming up the hill. Peter soon pulled Pat's van out of the ditch. Then he did better than that. He had his snowplough fitted to the front of the tractor. So he drove in front of Pat, clearing a way through the snow. Alf and Dorothy Thompson were delighted to see them. They thought they were snowed in for the week. If you hadn't come, said Alf, we'd have had no parcels, no cards and no visitors all Christmas. Bless you both. Pat and Peter couldn't stop. They had to push on before snow and darkness stopped them. Peter went ahead up all the hill roads and cleared the snow. Pat followed as fast as he could with the post. When at last they got back to the village and the safety and shelter of the valley, they were cold and tired. Mrs Goggins had hot drinks and Christmas cake waiting for them in her sitting room behind the post office, and they sat in front of a big fire to warm their toes. Sam and Ted soon came to join them. Ted's post bag was empty, and so was Sam's van. But there was a load of parcels for Sam to take to Pencaster to catch the evening post and the train to London. Oh, Pat, said Mrs Goggins, I mustn't forget to tell you. There was a phone call from the vicarage. The Reverend said, would you please be sure to call at the village hall on your way home tonight? Now you won't forget, will you? He said it was important. I'll not forget, said Pat. It was time for everyone to go their different ways. They wished each other safe journey and Merry Christmas, and they were all on their way. Pat remembered to call at the village hall, and what a scene he saw there. He walked into the middle of the Village Institute Christmas party for all the Greendale children. And who do you think was sitting by the Christmas tree giving out presents to the children? Father Christmas himself. Pat said he wished he could have a flying sleigh drawn by reindeer to deliver his parcels, and that made Father Christmas laugh. He had a special present for Jess, a small parcel done up in a blue ribbon. I wonder what it can be, said Pat. Now Jess will have a parcel to open on Christmas Day. Pat joined in a dance with the children and kissed Miss Hubbard under the mistletoe. Jess gave Lucy Selby a kiss, <laughs> a lick on the nose. Then it was time for Pat to be on his way home. Christmas Eve soon came. It was time to put out the post office lights and lock up for the holiday. Mrs Goggins was looking forward to a good rest after all the extra work. Everyone was. All the cards and parcels had been delivered and everything was ready for the excitements of Christmas Day itself. The children of Greendale could think of nothing but the moment when Father Christmas would call, of wakening up very early in the morning to find a stocking filled with presents at the foot of the bed, of sitting round the Christmas tree with a pile of exciting parcels waiting to be opened. Oh, how would the minutes between now and then ever pass? But they did pass, 
very early in the morning on Christmas Day, lights began to wink on in cottages and farms wherever children lived the whole length of Greendale. In Pat's house, young Julian woke Pat and Sarah by jumping on the bed with his loaded stocking. He snuggled in between them to pull his presents out one by one. Then it was out of bed and down to the tree to see the parcels waiting there. Pat was far too sleepy to open his presents until he had made a cup of tea. As for Jess, when he saw that it was still dark, he curled up in his basket and went back to sleep. They had a lovely Christmas, and Pat had three whole days with no letters or parcels to deliver. They went to church for the Reverend Tim's Christmas Day service. Miss Hubbard conducted the choir, who sang beautifully, and Peter Fogg pumped the organ. On Boxing Day, they went to the pantomime in the village hall. It was Jack and the Beanstalk this year. On the day after Boxing Day... Jess decided to open his present. He tore it open with his claws when no one was looking. Then he carried it off in his mouth and hid it somewhere. I wonder what it was, 